Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. I'm Pastor Sean, and I have the honor of bringing you your word for the day. Uh, Today's passage follows Jesus' disciple, Peter, after Jesus gets arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. And now Peter's waiting outside while Jesus is put on trial. Let's read what happens to Peter. Matthew 26, 69 through 75 says this. Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said, but he denied it before them all. I I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Then he went out the gateway where another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, This fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath this time. I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses and he swore to them. I don't know the man. And immediately a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken to him before. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and he wept bitterly. I want to point out that Peter is probably one of the more tougher disciples. He's a gruff fisherman who's willing to draw his sword and fight to the death if Jesus commanded him to. And so to see his rough and tough fishermen broken and weeping should make us pay attention to what's happening. If you know the story, before Peter has a chance to deny Jesus, Jesus actually warned him that he was going to do it. Jesus already knew that Peter was going to sin and reject him. So why was Peter crying? Why was he weeping bitterly? I mean, can you imagine it? Face contorted Tears and snot uncontrollably streaming down his cheeks. What brings a man to the end of his rope like this? You see, I think it wasn't because Jesus knew it was going to happen. No, I believe Peter wept bitterly because he realized he finally understood there was nothing he could do in his own power to stop himself from sinning and rejecting the Savior of the world. And his sins and rejection of Jesus finally tore his heart apart. You see, he was broken from his understanding that he was helpless to his sins and he was in the face of insurmountable death. And so he wept. My question to you today is where is your heart? Do you understand, as Peter did, that on our own, we are helpless to sin? That in your broken flesh, the most you can muster is more sin and more death and more rebellion towards our perfect God. Do you understand? Have you been brought low by your sin and helplessness, by your brokenness? Because the truth is, is we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But those who call themselves Christians, but don't find themselves broken by their sinfulness, won't quite understand what happens to Peter next. You see, in Peter's lowest point, after Jesus is resurrected, after being brutally murdered on a cross, Jesus invites Peter to sit with him, and then he gives him grace. You see, Jesus wasn't shocked that Peter had rejected him and sinned. Remember, he called it out. So, for as many times Peter rejected Jesus, Jesus forgives and reinstates Peter that many times. What a beautiful picture of the gospel, of what Jesus came to this earth to do for all who believe in him. You see, yours and my sins, they don't surprise Jesus, which means that when he went to that cross, he knew and became every single one of our sins, past, present, and future. He paid the eternal price for all of them. So you can live in that tension between your brokenness and his immeasurable grace. And in this mysterious tension, this is where we find freedom and forgiveness and purpose and joy beyond joy and relationship with the creator and savior of the world. This is the tension that Peter got to live in. But he fully understood it when the Holy Spirit came upon him for the first time in Acts 2. And then in that tension, he preached the gospel. And 3,000 people were cut to the heart, just as Peter was when he denied Jesus three times. And when they asked Peter, what do we do now? Peter told them, 
Repent. Be baptized in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of of your sins. So they too can live in that beautiful in between and have a relationship with Jesus. So, where is your heart today? Are you broken over your sins? Are you broken over your helplessness to save yourselves from them? If we want to live in the tension of freedom and forgiveness and relationship with Him, we need to understand how broken we are. Then the Holy Spirit comes in and helps us to understand God's beautiful grace that he offers us. His Spirit will move us to repentance, baptism, freedom, and relationship with him. So one more time, where is your heart? Is it broken? Take time today and every day to confess your sins to Jesus. He's not surprised by them. He's already paid the price for them. And as many times as we have rejected or will reject Jesus in our own power, just like Peter, we will be forgiven and continually shown the beauty and immeasurable value of his grace. I love you a lot, Calvary. I hope you live in that tension today. Have a blessed day.